Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. Some of my most popular uploads recently have been covering the history of various fighters from the Street Fighter universe. So due to popular demand and as chosen by the fine people who back this channel on Patreon, in this content we are going to be looking at the story of the Capcom classics most dastardly dictator. Out of all of the bad guys and villains within the Street Fighter canon, none are quite as well known and remembered as that of M. Bison which I guess makes a lot of sense considering he is the final boss in the most famous fighting game in all of history. But just because he is the main antagonist in the best selling entry in the series, is M. Bison legitimately the baddest man on the planet? Or are there other Street Fighter characters who deserve to hold such a title? Let's find out today as we look at the entire story of Bison's existence within the world of media and video games. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the horrifying story of M. Bison. Yeah. So by now we all know about the overtold anecdote of Bison being known as Vega in Japan and simply being referred to as Dictator at international fighting game events, but what about this character's original design? The last opponent in Street Fighter 2, the World Warrior's design, was inspired by a villain who features in the Ricky O anime and manga. As you can see from looking at these illustrations of the character known as Washizaki, there is more than just a subtle resemblance. As for who this dastardly do is, who Bison will be based upon, Washizaki is a dictator who has complete control over a city that is not even marked on any map. Washizaki has grand goals of unleashing a nuclear attack on the world so that he can rule over it and rebuild it in his perfect vision. The story featured in this anime does have some parallels with Bison's in-game story, but we shall get to that later. Speaking of Bison's original concept, further design influence is said to have been taken from a character known as Kato Yasunori, the main villain from the movie Tokyo The Last Megalopolis, based on the Taito Monogatari series of literature. Apart from featuring, once again, very obvious design similarities, Kato is also a powerful sorcerer, giving him supernatural powers not too unlike some of Bison's fighting techniques, which we will highlight later. Kato is said to be a descendant of those who rebelled against the Japanese Imperial Court in ancient times, and has thus inherited their grudge. He enlisted in the Imperial Japanese Army under the guise of a Japanese soldier and manages to rise to the rank of First Lieutenant, giving him his military look. But once inside, he begins embarking on his goals to cripple Japan, even joining forces with Chinese and Korean anti-Japanese oppression groups to assist with his dubious intent. Throughout the last megalopolis, Kato is very close to achieving his goals. Saying all of this, although there are very clear parallels between these characters and M. Bison, all these characters along with Bison himself all simply wear clothing that resembles the Japanese and Chinese Imperial uniforms. In fact, when you look at the winged skull on his visor, representing Shadowloo, which we will talk about more soon, it does not make his hat look that different to those worn by SS officers in Nazi Germany. So everything about his design looks pretty damn villainous. As for this fighter, we all know that his appearance would be in the original incarnation of Street Fighter 2 as the game's last boss. However, he would also become playable alongside other Grandmasters as of Champions Edition. In combat in the game, Bison fights using a self-taught style, using the psycho power, an evil negative or psychotic energy that he exploits. Bison can wield these deadly powers to great effect, pulling off trademark manoeuvres such as the Psycho Crusher, an opponent destroying Torpedo Spin. Amongst his varied arsenal of dangerous attacks, Bison can also use a Psycho Power Charged Hand when even executing the simplest of punches. Bison's athleticism and cunning paired with the psychotic energy that he wields makes him a dangerous opponent indeed, and one worthy of a final challenge. But aside from his fighting techniques, who exactly is M. Bison? Let's find out. To put it as simply as I can, M. Bison is your typical traditional villain, motivated by a lust for power and his own self-serving interests, with one life goal of conquering the world. He can be considered a megalomaniac, a psychopath, a dictator and even a terrorist. The man who is often regarded as the world's greatest martial artist will destroy anyone who stands in his way. His insane ego and out of control god complex makes it completely impossible for him to be able to empathise with anyone and takes a great deal of pleasure in watching others suffer. This sadism is often reflected by his more than iconic evil smile, which he often cracks particularly when he is displaying his twisted sense of humour. Bison's true beginnings are shrouded in mystery, with even his country of origin being an unknown. It is said though that there was a time when he was a young martial artist like any other, but with an overwhelming sense of ambition. 
Legend has it that M. Bison murdered his own master before giving in to complete chaos in his life. Bison's master is said to have been the only person in the world who knew how to manipulate the evil psycho power before passing it on to his students such as Bison. In his thirst for more power, knowledge and strength, Bison would defeat many more martial artists, learning their techniques along the way, all as part of his goal to be known as the best fighter on the planet. Competing with all sorts of wrongdoers in the underworld, somehow Bison would become the leader of a syndicate known as the Shadaloo. Chronologically, the first point that M. Bison appears in the Street Fighter timeline is within the Street Fighter Alpha series, a trilogy of games set halfway between the 1987 Street Fighter title and Street Fighter 2. A mid quarrel if you will. M. Bison appears as a secret character in the first Street Fighter Alpha game via a special input. Like all other characters, his storyline was retconned for Street Fighter Alpha 2. In Alpha 2, Bison learns of a fighter known as Ryu, who was successful in defeating his henchman Sagat. Bison then decides to search for Ryu so that he can recruit him to his criminal organisation. During his search, he even gets into a skirmish with a mysterious woman known as Rose, who wields very similar abilities to his own. These similarities come into play further within Alpha 3. During Alpha 2, Bison also meets Chun-Li, who he toys with revealing he murdered her father, before finally finding Ryu. In a Darth Vader style fashion, Bison promises the young warrior good things if he joins him, but Ryu refuses, causing the two men to fight. Bison is successful in beating Ryu and takes him captive to begin brainwashing him with psycho power. Throughout his adventure, he also fights a man known as Charlie Nash, who is on a mission to defeat him. This eventually culminates in Charlie confronting him by a waterfall, and the two then fight with Charlie picking up the victory. After this, Charlie though is shot in the back by a helicopter, and Bison finishes him off by punching a hole through his chest. Street Fighter Alpha 3 reveals even more about M. Bison's story, including that he engineered Kami using his own DNA as a template to form part of an elite dull squad. As covered in my Kami retrospective video, she broke free from her brainwashing and seek to save her fellow dolls. In some ways, much of the events of Street Fighter Alpha 3 appear to be somewhat of a retelling of what went down in Alpha 2, but then builds on them further, as Bison is once again on a journey to find Ryu. He even learns of and defeats Akuma, a warrior with a similar fighting technique to Ryu, who Bison deems his powers as less than nothing, declaring it only a matter of time before he claims Ryu's body as his own. The story of Alpha 3 changes depending on who you play as. In Ryu's story, Bison kidnaps and brainwashes Ken, pitting the two against one another with Ken under his influence. Like in Alpha 2, Bison defeats Ryu and subjects him to brainwashing. Ryu is able to escape though, due to M. Bison being begged by Sagat to let him have a rematch with Ryu. As Sagat is trying to wake him up, Sakura and Ken attack Bison, causing the distraction allowing him to escape. Ryu and Bison fight each other in an epic battle with Bison trying to take control of Ryu's mind once more, but ultimately Ryu manages to win, temporarily incapacitating Bison, seeing him retreat into the Psycho Drive to regenerate himself. Aside from this, as mentioned with Kami going rogue, she manages to turn the dolls against Bison. Bison manages to rise from the Psycho Drive, deciding the dolls are no longer of use to him anyway, so will dispose of them, warning Kami that if he perishes, she and all the dolls will too, due to their psychic link and he will simply use her body as his new vessel. Kami though manages to use her genetic similarities to Bison to take control of the Psycho Drive herself, removing the psychic failsafe and saving them. As mentioned earlier with this game retconning some of Alpha 2, Chun-Li with Guile and Charlie realised they would have to destroy the Shadaloo base themselves. While Chun-Li and Guile escape the explosion, Charlie is left fighting Bison, sacrificing his own life to allow his friends to get away. In many ways I guess Charlie is a lot like Kenny from South Park. While Bison's body is destroyed along with the base, he soul survives the explosion, taking control of Rose's body. Bison remains inside Rose's body until his shadow scientists forge a new body for him, at which point he releases Rose from his control and she awakens back at home, with few memories of what happened. All of these crazy events essentially act as a setup for what went down in the famous Street Fighter 2, where Bison now has a new body and has established a brand new Shadaloo base at a temple in Thailand, subjugating nearby villages in the process. Bison announces a second World Warrior tournament with the purpose of luring out Ryu once more, leading to all the fights that unfold in so many people's favourite game. The ending of Street Fighter 2 has different outcomes depending on who you play as, but if you win as Bison, his ending declares that he successfully rules the world with no more opposition to get in his way. In Guile's ending, he claims defeating Bison was revenge on behalf of his friend Charlie, who Bison had killed in Cambodia, an event which we know was built on with the creation of the Alpha Games. 
But perhaps the most interesting end to the tournament came with the release of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, where if players reach a specific set of criteria, in the final match Akuma shows up, killing M. Bison in an instant, serving as an alternative last boss in the game. Akuma mocks M. Bison for being a slave of his own power, giving Bison his fair share of comeuppance. Following this event, canon or not, Bison's soul managed to survive and was transferred to yet another replacement body, meaning his involvement in the Street Fighter story would continue. The next game chronologically in the story after Street Fighter 2 is Street Fighter 4. The story reveals that prior to even Street Fighter 2, Bison ordered the manufacturing of 26 androids by Sin, the specified weapons division of Shadowloo, which is being led by a gentleman known as Seth. Seth is an artificial intelligence designed to inhibit synthetic humanoid bodies that possess a Tandon engine and is one of many genetically engineered replacement bodies for M. Bison. Further to this, it is revealed that Bison murdered a Korean official and his family, with the daughter Jewelry barely surviving. Bison keeps her as a test subject, giving the already Taekwondo prodigy cybernetic enhancements. In Bison's absence, Seth makes his own attempt at world domination, beginning with the announcement of a new tournament. Jewelry though is aware Bison is not gone forever, and begins to attempt to put Bison and Seth against one another. Bison manages to manipulate events behind the scenes and orders Balrog and Vega to capture Seth, with Seth revealing that Sin has been manipulating Shadowloo. This causes Bison to end up taking Jury's bait and returning with his soul being transported by scientists into another body. This one, not as powerful as some of his previous incarnations, stating it did not matter as he would inhibit Seth's body soon. Bison takes part in Seth's tournament, destroying everyone in his path, encountering new opponents such as Sea Viper for the first time. Eventually he gets to Seth at Sin headquarters, attacking him for his autonomy and lack of servitude. Seth claims that he rebuilt Bison's fallen empire with Bison claiming that was only because he planned for Seth to do it for him all along. Jury arrives on the scene realising her plan had failed as neither man had destroyed one another, due to Seth not putting up enough of a fight. Jury then fights Bison herself with Bison's Street Fighter 4 ending, revealing he was the victor. In Street Fighter V, Bison comes up with another evil plan, this time to create Seven Black Moons, a powerful satellite system capable of causing havoc via electromagnetic pulse waves. The purpose of creating such terror would be to fuel Bison's psycho power to godlike levels. A problem he soon faces though is that parts of the machinery are stolen that are needed to make his plans become a reality. It turns out the thieves are Shadowloo programmers, so Bison dispatches his generals to locate them. A missing piece is found by Fang, Saget's replacement within Shadowloo, which is used to activate a moon and decimate a city. In the remains of the city, Bison is attacked by Chun-Li, who he easily defeats due to his powers being at an all-time high, due to the panic and fear caused by his weapon in the sky. In fact, Bison would have killed her, but she is saved by Kami. With Bison's power and influence on the planet reaching an all-time high, the Illuminati get involved to protect their own power. Using their insane secret technology, they revive the corpse of Charlie Nash, who Bison killed in the Alpha games. This is done in the hope that Charlie will assassinate Bison, which is made more possible through the Illuminati's bioengineering and mind manipulation. Bison easily dispatches of Charlie when the two men eventually meet again. Realising that Bison is now way too powerful for anyone to take on, Charlie only manages to escape due to the appearance of Nakali. Nakali is a new character made for Street Fighter V and is said to be the ancient consumer of powerful souls. He ends up challenging Bison as well, but even he gets overwhelmed by the dictator's insane powers, proving that he is so strong that he could even stop an ancient prophecy. After Charlie manages to escape the situation, he reunites with Guile and gathers with other fighters who oppose Bison. Here he realises the potential that he now wields thanks to the engineering. Utilising his power properly, he would be able to nullify psycho power, but doing so against an opponent as powerful as Bison would still be tough. When all the fighters attack the Shadowloo base, Charlie fights Bison again, who is seemingly invincible by this point. Charlie is successful in absorbing a ton of psycho power, but eventually it obliterates him. Another newcomer to the story is Rashid, who prevents some of the moons descending, weakening Bison's power. Having mastered a special training technique, Ryu shows up to stop Bison for good. In Bison's fight with Ryu, in his now weaker state, Bison is nearly killed by the white gi wearing karate bum, and in a last ditch effort attempt to perform his Psycho Inferno attack, Ryu counters with a Hadouken infused with dark energy, which causes Bison to laugh as he slowly fades away, consumed by the power of nothingness. Past this point in time, well at least up until what has been written so far, Bison becomes a mere spectre that haunts people with the Illuminati becoming the main villains in the last games in the Street Fighter timeline. 
for Street Fighter 3 series. Although, looking back at all of this, Bison is certainly the most prolific bad guy in the whole Street Fighter timeline. But in regards to the timeline, this is just scratching the surface, and Bison would prove so important to the franchise that he would appear in countless other games and media too. One of the most loved representations of M. Bison is in the original live action movie that was created directly off of the back of the success of Street Fighter 2. Not only is M. Bison the main villain in this movie, but his character in said film is by far the most beloved of all Rebel Trails. While the Street Fighter movie was a smash hit at the commercial box office, it has the reputation of being somewhat of a bad movie, featuring a clunky story and hammy acting throughout. Raul Julia, who plays Bison in the movie, delivers a performance so strong that he is one of the few saving graces of the entire experience. The plot of the film differs from that of the games in that Shadaloo is a South Asian nation where war has broken out and the drug lord turned general and Bison has seized power. In this movie, Bison is an English megalomaniacal kingpin said to have been based off of William Shakespeare's Richard III character. For the performance, Raul would draw inspiration from Fidel Castro, Gaddafi, Idi Amin and Saddam Hussein amongst others and would go on to copy Mussolini's hand gestures, Stalin's demeanour and Hitler's love for art. Julia was dedicated to his craft. Throughout filming, Julia was battling stomach cancer but took the role to play Bison as he felt it would allow him to spend more time with his children, who also happened to be massive fans of Street Fighter. His poor state of health is apparent in the movie due to his substantial weight loss and would sadly pass away shortly after, but his contributions to the acting world will never be forgotten. In the world of live action movies, M. Bison would surface again in Street Fighter The Legend of Chun-Li, this time being depicted by Neil McDonoghue, being presented as a multilingual crime boss under the guise of a Bangkok-based Irish businessman. This version of Bison was abandoned in Thailand as a child by his Irish missionary parents eventually running Shadaloo in this work too. This Bison sacrificed his pregnant wife in the bowels of a mystic cave, where he imbued his daughter Rose with the goodness of his soul, thus ridding himself of any sense of conscience. His raw physical power is seen to borderline on unearthly, and his spiritual power is equally immense. The film culminates with Chun-Li managing to kill him, successfully doing so by twisting his head around using her thighs. Very Xena on the top. In other live action media, Bison is ridiculously resurrected by Rita Repulsa, meaning there is a film where Bison takes on Ryu, Chun-Li and even bloody Tommy Oliver, the Green Power Ranger. But we are going to explore this topic in depth in the future. At the same time the original live action movie was released, an anime Street Fighter 2 movie was released in Japan. In this film, M. Bison is of course the main antagonist and leads Shadaloo to take control of the world. Like in the Alpha series and Street Fighter 2, he sets out to seek Ryu for his fighting potential that has been proven against Sagat. The film climaxes with Ryu and Ken defeating him, but in the finale, the film ends with them doing battle against one another once more. The Street Fighter 2 V animated series tells a familiar tale too, however Bison in this one has formed an odd pact with a statue that seems to be telepathically linked to him and provides his psycho power. This Bison also often loses control of his powers if he indulges in too much bloodlust. Now Bison would appear in video games that were non-canon to the main Street Fighter video game story too, such as the Street Fighter the movie video games that were based on the original live action movie. He would also appear in every single entry of the Street Fighter EX series, the series of polygonal fighters that were created by Arika. This series too has its own chronological story with it all occurring directly after Street Fighter 2. EX is basically the Dragon Ball GT of the Street Fighter series. Bison's place in the overall canon of these games is his annoyance at an individual known as Shadow Geist who is hosting the EX tournaments. Bison wants to stop him to maintain control of the fighting and criminal world, so sets out on multiple occasions to put a stop to it all. A secret tougher version of Bison also appears in EX2 and 3, known as Bison 2. Super Saiyan Bison is created when he fuses two of his bodies together, and overall provides a nice little twist on what we are all used to from the character. Bison would also show up in a huge number of crossover fighting games, with the first of these appearances taking place in X-Men vs Street Fighter, where he would team with Magneto. Master of Magnet, I might add, to pursue world domination together. However, if you play as Bison, his ending shows him portraying Magneto and defeating him. 
Hilariously, a Magneto completion shows Bison's ending from Street Fighter 2 with the four Grand Masters, with Bison being swapped out for Magneto. He would then go on to appear in a number of other Marvel vs Capcom games, along with all of the Capcom vs SNK games too. Bison would also show up in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, teaming with Jury. Bison's partnership with Jury is based on his suggestion that despite their intense dislike for each other, the two are working together towards a common goal involving the mysterious Pandora's box, with both of them trying to take one another out at the end of their campaign. Our favourite dictator would also appear as a boss fighter in Street Fighter Cross Mega Man, made an appearance in Project X Zone 2, showed up in the mobile RPG Blood Brothers 2, and even Capcom Fighting Evolution, a game that in his ending shows him fighting and defeating Gil, the leader of the Illuminati from Street Fighter 3, who he never got the opportunity to get his hands on in the canon. All in all though, looking back at all of this, it is impossible to deny that M. Bison is the biggest baddie in the history of the Street Fighter franchise, serving as the final boss in multiple entries and reaching all new levels of power in Street Fighter V. M. Bison remains a favourite character for many, be it for his video game appearances or even his excellent movie portrayal by Raul Julia. M. Bison is a special character whose terrifying drive will always have him coming back to try and conquer the world once again. The wielder of the psycho power will always be one of the greatest villains in video game history. Yeah! So ladies and gentlemen, that was the horrifying story of M. Bison. Let me know in the comments which Street Fighter you believe deserves highlighting next, as I would love to put said names on a ballot for this channel's Patreon backers to vote on. That way you all have some sort of say, even if ultimately this channel is my dictatorship. For you, the day you graced this Bison video was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. To check out some of my other Street Fighter biopic videos, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. And if you want to chat about Street Fighter lore with me live, then follow my Twitch channel and join me on Tuesdays and Saturday evenings. Also, if you like biopic style content, make sure you check out Top Hat Wrestling Man, featuring a video about Gangrel and many other bizarre wrestlers. Finally, I would like to give a huge thank you to each and every one of my patrons. The people who voted on me tackling this interesting subject in the first place. So, special thank yous go out to Sebastian Velez, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Harrod Dine, Corey Armarsh Sr., Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Ryan Dinched, Evan Border, Philip Mamp, Azra Rarakai, Keith Ferguson, Joaquin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Durant, Adrian Light85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Azana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Aaron McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sanghi, Felatio, Langston Miller, Noob, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Vlamit Rene, Marino Liga, Chris Cool, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bell, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Zai, Andrew Bazanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs me on Patreon. You can have your name appear on the end of these videos for as little as $5. Sucky Sucky, I love you long time. Yeah.